Hi, welcome to How to Repair. This video is on a Samsung fridge freezer that is not getting cold in the fridge compartment but the freezer is getting to a reasonable temperature. At the moment we have a temperature of uh, about minus 20 in the freezer uh, but the fridge is at room temperature. Uh, we've had a look on the graphing system the graphing system is showing us that the fridge slowly got warmer and warmer and warmer over the case of 48 hours. This is because the matrix in the freezer or the evaporator plate is building up with ice, restricting the airflow to the fridge compartment. So as the ice was building up, the air to the fridge got less and less and this is why the freezer is still at a good temperature but the fridge is only at 23 degrees. Now this video can be used for any single compressor with an electronic defrost system. Usually the freezer has got an evaporator plate in and this there is a fan which blows the air to the fridge compartment and what actually happens is as I said the air gets restricted. This is usually because an element is either blown or the one of the sensors in the freezer is not working correctly there is a possibility that there is a problem with the timer system you can see other videos on electronic timers we do have uh, genuine electronic timers at the website and also uh, replacement timers made by Elitech uh, which can be fitted to most fridge freezers but let's have a look at this fridge freezer and see what the problem is We'll just take a quick look at the graph. In the first video I did, I showed you the graph in detail. Now the defrost is not taking place. You can see the printed circuit board is requesting a defrost every 12 hours, but the element is not coming on. This means that we've either got a problem with the NTC sensor, uh, defrost uh, element itself, or possibly the thermal fuse. Right, first thing we need to do is actually unplug the fridge freezer before you do any work. Uh, now we need to remove all the shelving from within the freezer. As you can see, a bit of ice has built up on the door where our sensor was. But we'll put all these out of the way. Now, in the bottom here, we have a plate which needs to come off. This plate uh, usually has a screw and a couple of clips and we'll have a detailed look at that and how to remove the plate. Right here you can see the plate. We have a hidden screw here. It's got a bit of ice in it but we'll loosen this off. Now I'm actually, I'm actually removing this now so I can actually show you the problem. Normally I would let this completely defrost first because the plastic can be quite brittle when it's at minus 15, minus 20 degrees. But so I can show you what's actually happening to the evaporator plate, evaporator plate I'm quickly going to remove this. of plastic clips do be careful there we go again you can start to see the ice here uh, but we need to remove this to get to the matrix. This is the hole at the top here which you can see on the right hand side. I'll just move the camera around. This is where the air blows up to the fridge. Now you can see ice had built up here and also here. This will all restrict the flow of air going to the fridge unit. The fan spins. Sometimes the ice builds up to such an extent that the fan will even be hitting the ice but we need to remove these two screws at the top and 
get at them. Remember, at the website you will find all the spares for your fridge freezer. And if you can't find the Pacific part for your fridge freezer, feel free to send us an email and contact us. Now, as you can see here on the side, there's a couple of clips. I'm just loosening these off. And as I said, you can see that this panel is not moving too easily. And that's because there is a lot of ice on here. And I'm just having a check if there's any other screws that I need to remove. By the look of it, no. I said, when you're doing this, you should really wait for it to defrost. And I'll just disconnect the wiring. There's a cover here, which needs to come off. Right, that's our fan unit. There's our fan motor, but you can see what's going on here now. We have got a large amount of ice which is built up onto the plate. You can see the element at the bottom and the element runs along here. We're not going to test this at the moment. We're going to let it defrost for the next five, six hours. Or in these room temperatures, I'm hoping that it will defrost within the next uh, hour or so and then we'll be able to check the components, check the fan motors working correctly. We will check the sensor for the uh, defrost system and we will also check the element. But uh, we'll just let this defrost uh, naturally and then we'll come back and have a look at this after. Right, um, now we've had the unit defrosted I'm just going to quickly explain all the components and how it works. This is the only part in the whole refrigerator, the fridge and freezer, on this upright Samsung fridge freezer and a lot of other makes like Hotpoint, Indeset, Zanussi and so on. You have an evaporator plate uh, condenser. The, this gets very cold, goes down to temperatures of minus 25, minus 30. It has a defrost system built into it. It also has a couple of NTC sensors, one for air temperature here, another NTC sensor on the evaporator coil itself. We also have uh, an ev um, evaporator thermal fuse. Uh, this protects the heating system and we also have the heater itself. Now when this gets extremely cold the freezer is down to temperature the fan is activated by a door switch normally and this blows air around the freezer compartment but through the ducting system on the unit here it is also able to blow air through to the fridge which is controlled by another NTC sensor for your fridge temperature and the circuit board works out basically what's happening in the freezer compartment once it's down to temperature and everything is working correctly it blows air to the fridge compartment where it is controlled by another NTC sensor which will turn the fan on or off. On some makes of fridge freezer there is an electronic flap which will shut down the air going into the fridge but on this unit it's pretty basic it's controlled by the sensors and the problem with this fridge freezer was the ice was totally built up and basically the air could not flow through to the fridge and now it's defrosted it will work perfectly now if you do need to order components for your fridge freezer a good little technique is if you defrost it completely like it is now and keep the freezer door shut once you've reassembled everything the fridge freezer should work for a week to two weeks even though the defrost system will not work as long as you keep the door shut. By keeping the door shut you're reducing the moist air going into the fridge freezer 
and basically every time you open and shut your fridge door moist air goes in creates ice now as the ice builds up it stops the airflow to the fridge compartment so as long as you keep your door shut on your freezer it should work for about a week to two weeks with no problems at all this will allow you to order your parts and actually get the parts uh, fitted and uh, everything should be okay but anyway let's go into testing now we first need to ascertain that all the NTC sensors are working correctly right we've actually got the thermistor NTC sensor here and we've got the fan motor and as I said we've got another NTC sensor here so the plug for this NTC sensor is this one and it is male connections so I've put my crocodile glyphs on just to attach to the sensor and that came off okay now we set our meter to ohms now we have an air temperature of roughly 27 28 degrees uh, our meter is showing 4.6 resistance to ohms 4.6 thousand I'm just going to get the paper that I normally use I will put this on the website for you but I think we're running on a 502 AT thermistor and at 30 degrees we should be getting a resistance of 4,000 point well sorry 4.179 and at 25 degrees we should be getting 5,000 so we're at 4.6 which is well, thereabouts perfectly correct now by touching the NTC sensor with my fingers for a few seconds you will actually see the resistance dropping this tells me that this thermistor is working correctly and when I leave it go after a few minutes it will settle and the temperature will go back up we're at 4.27 here as it cools down it will rise there we go 4.28 of course it's not a big change so it will take a few seconds now the next uh, NTC sensor we need to check the evaporator sensor so that's this wire and this is a female connector so I'll just take my probes out of here now this NTC sensor is reading 5.4 but you must remember that this coil is still a bit cooler than the NTC sensor we just tested so we've got 5.39 as you can see it's going down in resistance so I would estimate that if it's showing 5.39 um, we basically have got just below 24 25 degrees on the coil and you can actually see the moisture on here so that's correct now if I put my finger onto it and leave it for a few seconds trying not to block your camera view you can see that the resistance is falling there we go 5.11 5.10 5.09 so I'm very happy with both NTC sensors they're working correctly and according to the data sheets um, I'm pretty happy with them and we're now going to test the element so we follow the lead from the element and that's our top plug here now they're female connectors so we'll just pop the two probes in now you can see that we have a resistance of 231 this is what I was expecting because it is a 250 uh, watt element that is fitted in this fridge freezer so I know this element is good now on the website I have done some detailed videos on how to test fridge freezer elements using Ohm's resistance law uh, Ohm's law and how to test cooker elements, how to test washing machine elements. Basically the figures that we need to worry about here is our ampage. Our ampage times the voltage gives us our wattage. Okay, 
uh, our wattage is a 250 element. So if we take 240 volts divided by 250 watts gives us 0.96 amps. 0.96 amps times the voltage gives us a resistance of about 230. Um, basically this element is showing 231 so we know that that element is pretty much correct. The last thing we're going to check is the thermal fuse. Now I actually know that this thermal fuse is blown. Um, basically thermal fuses can go for many reasons. Uh, one of the faults is it may have got stuck on defrost for too long a period. It may have exceeded the boundaries where the temperature got too hot. There are quite a few reasons why thermal fuses can blow. Um, the main reason really on this type is sometimes moisture can get into the bag uh, where the thermal fuse is or the defrost timer uh, or defrost printed circuit board has stayed on too long. Now we're able to test this on our graphing system and we'll be able to see how long the defrost should be. We estimate the defrost on this should be about 10 to 15 minutes maximum. Um, we will watch it on our graphing system which I'll show you at the end. You've already seen the graphing system of the defrost not working. What we need to do is look at how long the defrost element is actually on, uh, if it's within the desired parameters and we will also watch it over the course of a couple of days through the cycle to make sure the defrost cuts in. I think on this ridge freezer the printed circuit board runs at 12-13 hours. We did see it on the graph before but uh, let me just show you this defrost thermal fuse. So we'll just connect this up. We've got the meter now set on continuity. We have a circuit and we'll just quickly test the old one and as you can see we do not have a circuit so we're just going to slide this out and there's the old one now we can see inside the bag here it looks a little bit uh, hazy so there is a good chance that moisture has got in and this one is actually open at the bottom. Uh, it's crimped at the top but open at the bottom which means the bag has actually burst on this one uh, and moisture may have got in here and caused the thermal fuse to blow. So what we're going to do is replace this. I'm going to take off this tape around it which cushions it in there and I'll put some more tape on but I just want to take this off so you can see and you can see in the bag here, I'll bring it right up to the camera so the bag has actually opened up on the bottom for some unknown reason or it hasn't uh, been sealed when it was manufactured you can see the new one here is sealed at the top and sealed at the bottom so moisture may have caused this to blow uh, but it's definitely blown so I'm just going to get some tape to put it around here and slide it back into situation there. Right, I've got some double sided tape here so I'm just going to put this roughly on the same place as the last one. Just wrap this all the way around. And I'm going to use the old foam because I didn't have any foam tape. So we'll just peel that back take this round and that will do us nicely and now we're ready to slide this back in connected up and there we go now we'll connect up the whole fridge freezer again put everything back into place I'll quickly do that while you're watching 
and then we'll connect up the fridge freezer, leave it run on a couple of cycles uh, to see, make sure that the defrost system is working correctly. Okay, we're ready to connect all this back up, so we'll just quickly connect up the heater. As I said, these plugs can only go in in one position. And then we'll do our NTC sensor. All the way around. No, nope, not in that one. That's the correct one. As I said, all the plugs will only go in one way. Now, I know the fan is perfect. Uh, I've already, well, basically when the fridge freezer was running, I could see the fan motor and hear the fan motor running. So that's all perfect. And we'll just put this in. So we have our fan motor which slides in on that one. I'm sorry about the angle of filming, there's nothing I can do about it. And I do apologize for sweating profusely on this video, but it is with these camera lights and everything else in excess of 35 degrees. And the air temperature is about 26, 27. So we've got all this on. Make sure your tape is good here because that's the uh, airflow system. And we'll just put this round. Once you've got the wires in, make sure you put your cover back on and that just slots over. And just clips in either side. This stops any moisture or ice building up onto the actual electrics, because that is the high voltage side. This plate goes in, clips in, and the same on the other side. And that's all in place. Now we just need to put this cover on. There's two clips at the top that need to go over and come down to the side. One there, one there, and one there. That's all done. Put the screw back in, in the middle. That's all done. Now we just need to put our drawers in. And now we're ready to put the fridge freezer on test, connect it up to our monitoring system and we'll look at it over the course of the next few days to make sure it's defrosting correctly and the defrost cycle is taking place correctly. This is our testing equipment which we use on our fridge freezers. We're able to insert a probe into the fridge, a probe into the freezer so, and we have one probe that measures the air temperature. So, I'll just put this on top, and our blue is for our freezer, and our fridge will come over. And that will just tuck into the back there. So that's all done. We'll run it for a couple of days now and we'll have a look at the graph in a minute. Remember that you can buy all your parts, whether your element has gone, your fan motor, any of the NTC sensors, all at the website. Uh, and if you can't find them on the website, it's usually because they're serial number dependent. You will always find your identification label normally in the fridge but sometimes it can be in the freezer, on the sidewall, sometimes hidden below the salad tray. Uh, so let's plug this in and we'll put it on test for the next couple of days. 
Hi, welcome back to our graphing system. Now we've actually done the repair on this fridge freezer. I suspected it was either the heating element or NTC sensor that was failing. And the reason why I suspected that is I never saw at any point during the four day graph that I showed you originally any defrosts taking place. As I said, these individual little spikes are the compressor dooring on the starter relay but these reasonable sized blocks are actually the defrost taking place. The temperature is just below, uh, sorry, the, the defrost element is actually 250 watt, but because our voltage is slightly different, it may be 230 instead of 240, uh, we're seeing a slight difference on the graph. Uh, basically, we plugged in the fridge freezer originally and it ran for a few hours came down to temperature then went into a nice cycling mode and then after roughly four or five hours of run time the uh, PCB requested a defrost the defrost took place it then ran for about 24 hours this period here by the way is me leaving the door slightly ajar by accident uh, when I was checking something but basically a defrost took place after about 24 36 hours then again another defrost took place roughly 13 hours later and another defrost took place about 24 hours later. In the next video I will leave this run for a couple of days to show you a complete rundown of the graph but I'm just quickly going to zoom in here to show you how the graph works properly. As I said we have a run time so the compressor is running at oh, exactly 4 o'clock in the morning and it ran, sorry, 4 o'clock and it ran for roughly 35 minutes before it shut down then it came back on 30 minutes later and continued through the cycle which is running absolutely perfectly when the defrost took place on the uh, first graph we were only getting temperatures rise to roughly minus 14 degrees but we did not see the wattage being drawn on the element. Now we've replaced the thermal fuse you can actually see that the defrost is taking place for roughly that's 642 and that's 704 so we've got roughly a 20 minute defrost taking place where the element is energized to clear the ice off the matrix and again it does it here and you can see that our temperature probe, probe which measures the temperature of the air in the freezer not the mass of food rises to about six degrees so you can actually see that it rises uh, ten degrees more than on our first graph this doesn't mean the freezer temperature as a total rises to this temperature because you have a mass of food in there which will hold the temperature but for about a 10-15 minute period the freezer compartment air temperature rises to minus six and the actual plate uh, evaporator plate or matrix gets warm melts the ice off this and then goes down through the drain hole onto the collection tray on top of the compressor and evaporates away this keeps the airflow in the freezer working perfectly uh, and therefore allows the air to be blown to the fridge allowing the fridge freezer to maintain its temperatures and the cycle run correctly. So there we go. Now you can see the fridge freezer working perfectly. I will leave this fridge freezer on for a little bit longer and I'll do another short video explaining the graph in more detail. Uh, but there we go. I hope you found this video helpful. Please remember to shop at How to Repair as that's what keeps us going and able to make these videos for you. And if you did find this series of videos helpful, remember you can always donate to the website to help support us. Thanks very much indeed for watching this video. And remember we do videos on washing machines, tumble dryers, dishwashers, ovens, cookers, hobs, extractors, etc. Thanks very much again.